drugs, put on your high tops, come on outside. The day's gonna be You've been feeling dizzy for the past few days, so you go to the doctor's office to check on it. Diagnostics are run, but results seem inconclusive, so you stay at the hospital the rest of the evening for further testing. A week later, the doctor calls with results that make your throat sink to the pit of your stomach. You've been diagnosed with a rare form of brain cancer and find it is in an inoperable stage of progression. There's nothing they can do. Now, imagine the same scenario, but only a few decades into the century. Doctors complete a biopsy and check the expression of cancer against your genome on file at the hospital. Within a few days, a therapy has been developed specific to your genome. And after a few days of treatment, metastases ceases, then 100% of tumor cells have been killed. In 1990, an initiative known as the Human Genome Project began under the direction of James Watson and was completed in 2003. Knowing what makes humans human, the next step is learning what makes us different. Researchers discovered roughly 3 billion base pairs, or 25,000 genes, in the human genome. The project took researchers worldwide approximately 9 months and $300 million to complete. With the completion, a new horizon of possibilities has opened, looking to nanotechnology as an avenue to the forefront of genomics, ranging from DNA sequencing to profiling and expression. Currently, sequencing is very time-consuming and costly, but once the human genome can be sequenced effectively and at a low enough cost, a number of possibilities would be available. To encourage this, in 2006, a $10 million prize was posted by the X Prize Foundation for the first group of competitors to be able to sequence 100 human genomes in 10 days for no more than $10,000 per genome. This set into motion a flurry of thoughts and competition in the genomic community worldwide. Next generation techniques, whose focus is on single molecules, appear to be the route taken by a majority of competitors. Currently, there are two promising technologies researchers hope to use to accomplish the task of nanosequencing using next-gen technology. Presently, DNA must be amplified using PCR or polymerase chain reaction to render a sufficient amount of DNA. Next-gen technologies, including nanopores, forego the PCR step because only a minute amount of DNA is needed. Nanopores are small insulating sheets of atoms, such as silicon, containing a small pore less than 2 nanometers in diameter. The DNA in question is added to conducting fluid with the nanopore. Because DNA is negatively charged, it will be pulled to the opposite end by a positive charge. As the potential is applied, the strands of DNA move through the fluid and are forced lengthwise through the pore. The four different base pairs, A, C, T, and G, each cause a unique interference when passing through the pore. Since the current is extremely sensitive to the size of this pore, the characteristic blockage made by each of the bases becomes a basis for the nanopore sequencing hypothesis. Although this technique is promising, only limited results have been seen. It is still difficult to detect the individual bases, but with current technology, this problem is alleviated by reading a nucleotide 100 times, although this does nothing to help with the efficiency. The goal of the idea is to be able to achieve a sequence rate of 10,000 base pairs per second, therefore allowing an entire human genome to be sequenced within three and a half days. Compare this to the around-the-clock nine-month span when it was originally sequenced. A second technology, which currently shows the most potential, is being developed by Visigen Biotechnologies Incorporated, a company based in Houston, Texas. Their technology takes advantage of factors involved in DNA replication by engineering DNA polymerases, the enzyme that adds together the base pairs, and nucleoside triphosphates, the molecules which give identity to the base pairs. Using the crude analogy of a copy machine, polymerase can be viewed as the ink cartridge and nucleoside triphosphates can be seen as the ink. Just like with nanopores, no amplification is needed because they are also dealing with single molecules. First, they synthesize polymerase with the donor fluorophore and attach acceptor fluorophores to the nucleotides. When the nucleotide with the attached fluorophore enters the active side of the polymerase, energy is transferred from donor to acceptor. With this energy, the acceptor fluorophore gives off a light of certain wavelength corresponding to a particular base, which can then be identified using a photodetector. This past February, the company received patents in the US, Europe, and Australia, and planned for commercial use within the next two years. The hope is to eventually be able to sequence an entire human genome in less than a day and for about $1,000. By understanding the basis of life at the molecular level, a number of possibilities are available. Some areas of interest include basic research, bioarchaeology, anthropology, evolution, forensic identification, and agriculture and livestock breeding. Although these fields would benefit greatly from the technology, the largest impacts would be made on molecular medicine, specifically risk assessment and therapy. 
Within pharmacogenomics, drug design will not only be more rational, but actually customizable. Take cancer, for instance. The problem isn't killing the cells, it's being able to pinpoint only the tumor cells because even similar forms of cancer possess different levels of expression between humans. We will then be able to identify and create a chemotherapy drug that specifically targets the cancer and only cancer cells, just as in the example in the introduction. Furthermore, we'll be able to better diagnose disease and in much earlier stages. In fact, in a related field of disease assaying, nanotechnology is already having profound implications. DNA microarrays, which are chips containing tiny spots, each corresponding to a single gene, are used to compare the gene expression between two samples of cells, say normal and cancers. The mRNA of two populations of cells are first isolated, then amplified to a stable form of DNA called cDNA. During this step, different colored dyes are added to the healthy and faulty cDNA copies. The two cDNAs are then spread over the chip and bind to spots corresponding to genes they express. Then, through comparative techniques, it is possible to see which genes are or are not being expressed in either group of cells. Those fluorescing green are expressed in the healthy cells, while red fluorescence indicates expression in the disease cells. Yellow dots correspond to the gene expressed in both types of cells. The limit of the chips is the number of spots available or the number of genes which can be simultaneously analyzed. With the advent of nanotechnology, more dots can be added, therefore larger genomes could be assayed. This is the basis of sequencing for some of the other competitors of the Archon X Prize. We're at an exciting time in genomics. We're on the brink of discovering the underlying factors leading to heart disease, diabetes, common cancers, and virtually any disease that tends to run in the family. Cancer used to be defined by locale, but now is being identified via molecular profile. The use of genetic information holds the power to predict disease susceptibility and allow for the proactive care of humans worldwide. Nanotechnology looks to provide an effective and efficient way of sequencing, which could one day lead to more rapid and specific diagnostics, as well as the earlier and more precise treatment of maladies. New classes of drugs will be developed, and disease as we know it could even be eliminated through gene therapy and augmentation. Only time will tell what the future holds for us.